music theory folks, today we are going to be talking about triads. Now a triad is a collection of three pitches and think, um, think of like a tricycle has three wheels, so tri is, stands for three, triad. There are going to be three pitches in this. Remember we learned that a dyad had two pitches, now a triad has three pitches. Now, they're not just three random pitches. They have to be three superimposed pitches. Now, to superimpose something means to lay something on top of something else. So we're going to be taking um, superimposed thirds and laying them on top of each other. And the quality of thirds that we're going to be using are either major or minor. And depending on if we put, uh, you know, minor on top of major or reverse that or minor on top of minor or major on top of major, um, we are going to, by doing that, create four different qualities of triad. You can have major, which sounds happy. You can have a minor triad, which sounds sad. You can have an augmented triad, which to me always sounds like it kind of wants to implode on itself and become major, but augmented. Or you can also have a diminished triad, which to me always feels like it's uh, full of angst, you know, concern for the world. So those are the four types of triads that you can have. So let's look at how we build those four types of triads on both the keyboard staff, uh, on both the keyboard and on the music staff. So here I have the keyboard across the top. I also have a musical alphabet written, and then I have a staff. And when we're talking about triads, we're going to be relating them to all three of these things. So the first type of triad we're gonna talk about is major. And a major triad is built up of two superimposed thirds. The first third that's on the bottom of the triad is major. And then the second third that's on the top of the triad is minor. Let's look at what I've just drawn here. I've got three pitches. Um, I have a C, an E, and a G. And they are made up of these superimposed or stacked thirds. I could keep stacking thirds if I wanted to, and I'm going to create other harmonies by doing that that we're not going to learn about today. Um, I could also create a triad like this. You can see that the first triad that I built it's built on middle C, is all uh, lines on the staff, or I used the ledger line here. And the second one that I built is all spaces. So that's gonna, going to be one of the characteristics of our triad. So the first one that I built has C, E, and G in it. And no matter what chord quality you are building, no matter what triad quality you are creating, major, minor, augmented, or diminished, you're gonna start with this stack of superimposed thirds. And because they're thirds, they're always going to start on one pitch of the musical alphabet and then skip a pitch to get to the next pitch. So what do I mean by that? I started on C, I skipped over D, and now I'm on E, and then I'm gonna skip F and go to G. And even if I started on D, I did the same thing. I started on D, I skipped over E, and I have an F, and then I skipped over G, and I had an A. So no matter what the quality, this is how we're going to build it. I call it starting with a snowman. It looks like a little, you know, the snowman has three large snow snowball body parts um, creating the triad. Okay, so this first triad that I created is major. And the way that you build a major triad is to put a major third on the bottom and C up to E is a major third. If I start here on C and go up to E, that is one whole tone, two whole tones. Or if you want to think of C as the tonic, uh, for a major third you need to go up to Mi um, or scale degree three and E is scale degree three here. So that's my major third. So we're going to be talking a lot about this major third, which is made up of two 
whole tones. That's a good thing to remember. And then the top of the stack here is a minor third. And so from E to G, now we can see that there's one semitone and one whole tone here. Um, or if you want to think there's uh, three semitones here, but this is a minor third. Maybe we'll call it three semitones. One, two, three. So a major third is made up of two whole tones, a minor third is made up of three semitones. So if I want to build a major third on any pitch, let's say A flat, I'm going to start by building my snowman. So I start on some type of A, I'll start down here on this low uh, A, and then I skip a note, write the next letter in the musical alphabet, skip a note, write the next letter in the musical alphabet. And uh, it looks like a snowman. In this case, I've got three space notes instead of three line notes like I did for C major. The next thing I want to do is think about it on the piano. Let me get a nice bright color here. So since I'm starting on A flat, I know that I need a major third on the bottom and a major third is made up of two whole tones. Uh, let's see, one whole tone, two whole tones. Okay, so I need some kind of C, and in this case it's a C natural, because it's on the white note, so I don't need to add any accidentals to my C on the staff. Now I need a minor third from C up to E, some kind of minor third, so that's gonna be three semitones. So here I am on C, one semitone, two semitones, Ah, three semitones puts me on this black note, so um, I need to add an accidental to my staff, and I need to add an E flat. When you're writing accidentals on a triad, you will stagger them. So let's say I had to add accidentals to all of these pitches. I'd start at the top, you know, closest to the note head, and then the middle one I'd move out and then the bottom one, I'd kind of write in between those two. So you're just kind of staggering them, doing a little zigzag. But we don't need an A flat for this one. So these are both major triads. So I'd call this C major and this A flat major. So you can see how we're superimposing thirds on top of each other in this way. But you know, the way that I've always thought that uh, was best to teach this, and this is not my idea, I got this off the internet, was through the use of sandwich cookies. Um, and so for this video, if you happen to have them with you, you can build triads along with me. It helps if you have an original fill sandwich cookie and a double filled sandwich cookie or, you know, any type of cookie that, that you can use that has um, maybe a thin version and a thicker version. There's, you could use Reese's peanut butter cups, Reese's thin versus Reese's original or the Reese's mega, something like that. But what you're going to need is two kind of original, um, cream fill cookies and then two of the double fill cream cookies. Okay. The double fill cream cookies are going to represent the major third because the major third is a larger interval, right? It's made up of two whole tones. I guess if you wanted to, you can think of it as one, two, three, four semitones, I guess. I'd rather think in whole tones. Um, and then the original version of it, you can see, they are smaller, they are thinner than the double fill version. So this is gonna be our minor third representation. So in order to build a major triad, I need a major third, the double stuff, and a minor third, the original stuff. Now, what this creates between the bottom and the top of these two cookies, the interval, or between the bottom and the top of these two, two thirds, from C up to G is a perfect fifth. And that's gonna come in handy when we're building other intervals in order for us to double check that we have built the correct interval. Now I've just been talking about the thirds so far, but there, there's a kind of a generic name for each pitch within a triad. The pitch that the chord is built upon. So I originally I said, hey, here's a C, we're going to build a major third on top of it. Uh, Sorry, we're going to build a major triad on top of it. So the pitch that we built that triad on top of 
is called the root. And it's kind of like the root of the root of a tree or the root system of anything that's growing. Um, it's going to grow out of that root system. And then the other, um, the name for the other two pitches is just based on the interval above that root. So the middle pitch is called the third because it's a third above the root. And the top pitch is called the fifth because it's a fifth above the root. And even over here uh, in A flat major land, A flat is the root, C is the third, and E flat is the fifth. So I will also just talk generically about the pitches of a triad, referring to them as the root, the third, and the fifth. Okay, so back to our cookies. So from the root to the fifth in this major cookie stack is a perfect fifth. If I reverse my superimposed thirds, if I take and uh, my minor third original filled cookie and put it on the bottom, I still have the same distance from the bottom of the stack to the top of the stack, but now I have a different quality. This is going to be a minor triad. So let's take our C again, and that's our root. And now I want to build a minor triad on it. So same set of steps. I need some kind of root, some kind of third, and some kind of fifth. So I build my snowman. That snowman still starts on one pitch of the musical alphabet, skips a pitch, and then we write E, and then we skip F and write G. So I'm still following those rules. Now from here, I need to go up to my keyboard and we'll go to my bright, bright yellow again. And we're starting on C. But now for this minor triad, I need a minor third on the bottom and a major third on top. So for my minor third, I'm gonna go three semitones. One, two, three. Okay, I need to be on that black note. But according to my staff, I need some kind of E. And according to my musical alphabet, remember I'm skipping D, going right to E. So we are not going to write this as D sharp, we're gonna write it as E flat, because that's how it needs to be written on the staff. So I add my accidental to the left of the pitch. Now from E flat, I need a major third, I need a double step cookie. So here I am on E flat, I need to go up a major third, so I'm gonna do two whole tones. One whole tone, two whole tones. And that gets me to G natural. I don't need to do anything to the G here. But you can see the difference between C major and C minor. I had to add an E flat. So my bottom third in a minor triad is a minor third. And then I superimpose, or I stack on top of that, a major third. Notice when we did that with the cookies, here's my major triad. And then I just swap it so that the minor third's on the bottom. Here's my minor triad. The distance from the bottom to the top of the stack remains the same. I mean, how, how could it change? It's still the same two, two cookies. I've just reversed their order. So in a minor triad, from the root up to the fifth is still a perfect fifth. Okay, so this is minor. Let's go, let's go augmented. So here we are, since I'm kind of scrolling, I'll redraw my, my clef here. And we'll hang out on C again. Again, a triad is always gonna start with the same two steps. You're given a root, and then you're gonna draw your snowman on it. So it's either gonna be all lines, or all spaces. You are skipping pitches in the musical alphabet. Then you're gonna determine what intervals you need in order to create the requested triad. So I want an augmented triad. Well, an augmented triad 
is made up of two major thirds. So I'm going to take two double stuffed cookies and lay them on top of each other. So from my root to my third, I'm going to need a major third. And then from my third to my fifth, I'm going to need another major third. So here we go. Let's go back up to our keyboard. And we are going to start on C. And I need a major third. So that's two whole tones. One, two. And that gets me to E. I do not need to alter the E on the staff. That is correct. Now I need another major third from E upwards. So I'm going to do two whole tones. One whole tone, two whole tones. And that gets me to this black note. Now, because of what I wrote on the staff, it needs to be some kind of G. So what am I going to do in order to make it so that I would play this black note on the piano? I'm going to add a G sharp. So I add a sharp to my G. And now I have my augmented triad. Now let's look at the distance between the root and the fifth in the major triad or the minor triad. Remember they have the same same distance. Okay so here we are and I've got a trusty ruler. Why not? And it is one and an eighth inches tall for my major triad stack. If I if I swap it for minor it's the same. Okay, one and an eighth inches. If I have two major thirds or two double stuffs on top of each other, I get one and a quarter inches. So this is larger from the root to the fifth. Let's look at that on the staff. From my root to my fifth on my staff, I have C to G sharp. I've taken my perfect interval and I've made it one larger. This is an augmented fifth. So if you um, create your triad use you, using your superimposed major thirds to make an augmented triad, then double check from your root to your fifth. Is that an augmented fifth? If not, go back and double check your work. Let's build an augmented triad on a space note. Let's build it on F. So again, as with, with uh, starting on a line note, you're going to build your snowman. If um, you start on a line, you're going to use all lines. If you start on a space, we're using all spaces here. If I'm starting on F, then up the music alphabet I go. I skip G and I write an A. And I did that. And then I skip B, B and I write a C. And I did that. Okay, now I want an augmented triad, so I need a major third between my root and my third, and I need another major third between my third and my fifth. Okay, so I'm starting on F, I'm going up to my keyboard, I'm starting on F, I need a major third, so that's two whole tones, one, two, and I end up on A. That's what I have written on the staff. I do not need to add any accidentals. Now I need another major third up from A. So one whole tone, two whole tones. So I need the pitch on the staff that represents this black note on the piano. And based on what I've already written on the staff, it has to be some kind of C. I'm going to add an accidental to my C. I'm going to add a sharp. And that is an augmented triad. Okay, I'm gonna to go to another line for diminished. And why don't we be in bass clef? Can't neglect our clefs. But I will still start on C. How would I start on C3? As with all the other triads, it starts with a stack of superimposed thirds. It starts with the snowman. For this diminished triad, from the root to the third, we are going to have a minor third. And then from the third to the fifth, we are going to have another minor third. So now let's go to the keyboard and build basically a stack of two superimposed minor thirds. So just as with any other triad, I'm starting on one pitch, starting on C here, skipping the next pitch in the musical alphabet, going to E, skipping the next pitch in the musical alphabet, going to G. 
and I'm going to need to add accidentals. Okay, so we were given C as our root, we're starting there. Now I need a minor third up from C, so that's three semitones, one, two, three. So I need to add accidentals to the staff so that when I play the note on the piano, I get this black note. So I need to add a flat to my E, E flat. Okay, now that I'm on E flat, I need to go up another minor third. So here I am on E flat, I'm gonna go up one semitone, two semitones, three semitones. And I get to another black note. I'm gonna to need to use another accidental. So I needed some kind of G, and in order to get this black note on the piano, I'm gonna add another flat. So I'm gonna erase my E flat there so I can stagger my flats. I'm gonna add my G flat and then re-add my E flat. And that creates my diminished triad. Now let's look at that through cookies. So here's my augmented triad stack. Let's go back to our major triad stack. Okay, here we are major. Remember this was uh, one and an eighth inches from the bottom of the stack to the top of the stack. So from the root to the fifth. Now for my diminished triad, I'm going to need two original stuff cookies, two minor thirds. And now let's look at how tall this stack is. And it's exactly one inch. So this is smaller from the root to the fifth than the major triad was. And that makes sense because let's look here between our root and our fifth from C to E flat, that's a diminished fifth. So for the major triad and the minor triad, there's going to be a perfect fifth from the root to the fifth of that chord. And you're just going to swap um, which cookies you're using. For the major triad, you have double stuff on the bottom, the major third, and uh, original stuff on top, the minor third. So that's for our, your major triad. For your minor triad, it's uh, basically named after the third that's on the bottom here, uh, you just swap your two cookies or your two um, superimposed thirds. You have a minor third on the bottom or a regular stuff cookie and then a major third on top, your double stuff cookie. Um, for your augmented triad, you need to make the distance between the root and the fifth bigger. Remember, augment, um, when we augment an interval, it makes it larger. So we are using two double stuffs, uh, two major thirds stacked on top of each other. And then for a diminished triad, um, you are diminishing the distance between the root and the fifth and you're using two minor thirds or two regular stuffed cookies. So this is diminished. And those are the four qualities. And now, in order to taunt you and in order to test my resolve, I'm going to eat a cookie while trying to complete the rest of the lecture. Um, I highly encourage milk or coffee or something for this. These are the hardest cookies to then speak after eating. Okay, from here I want to look at a major scale and a minor scale and how when we take each scale degree and then build a triad on it, on each scale degree, what types of chord qualities are built when we do that. So here's a major scale, C major, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. What I'm about to do will work with any major scale, any major key. So let's go over how we talk about the pitches within a key. We can use solfege. This can be do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, and do. We can also have scale degrees. Scale degree one, scale degree two, three, four. I wrote three again. I don't know why. Four, five, six, seven, and then back to one. Or we can have scale degree names tonic, supertonic, 
mediant, subdominant, dominant, submediant, leading tone, and then back to tonic. Now I'm going to create try a triad on every single one of these scale degrees. So if I do that on C, I get C, E, and G. We saw that earlier. That's a major triad. I'm going to abbreviate that as an uppercase M. If I build a triad on the second scale degree, D, I got D, F, and A. D to F is a minor third. F to A is a major third. This is a minor triad. I'm going to abbreviate that with a lowercase m with a line across the top. Okay, scale degree three. If we build a triad on scale degree three and then analyze its interval content, between the root and the third, I have a minor third. Between the third and the fifth, I have a major third. This is a minor triad. Fourth scale degree. I build a triad. On the fourth scale degree, I analyze its interval content. From the root to the third is a major third. From the third to the fifth is a minor third. This is a major triad. I build a triad on the fifth scale degree. I analyze its interval content. From the root to the third is a major third. From the third to the fifth is a minor third. This is a major triad. Scale degree six. I build a triad on it. I analyze the interval content. From A to C, root to the fifth is a minor third. And from C to E, the third to the fifth is a major third. This is a minor triad. Build a triad on scale degree seven. From the root to the third, B to D is a minor third. From the third to the fifth, D to F is also a minor third. This is a diminished triad, and I abbreviate that by using a lowercase d. And then once I get back to the tonic, it's the same quality as the original tonic, it's major. If you replicate this process on any major scale, building a triad on each scale degree, you will get the same order of triad qualities. So major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. Let's look at a minor scale. Let's do C minor. I'm going to just use the key signature for C minor which is three flats, B flat, E flat, A flat. Here's scale degree one, scale degree two, scale degree three. I'm feeling in a solfege mood, so let's do Do, Re, Me. Scale degree four is Fa. Scale degree five is Sol. Uh, and I'm gonna stop there for a second because um, I'm gonna need more room <laughs> in order to create my triads in the minor in the minor key signature. So let's start on the first scale degree do, and we'll build a triad. Now, because of our key signature, this is an E flat. So from uh, C to E flat is a minor third, and from E flat to G is a major third. So this is a minor triad. Now, the second scale degree, if I build a triad on that um, and then analyze the interval structure from D to F is a minor third. And now F, because of the key signature, it's F to A flat. That's another minor third. So this is a diminished triad. The next pitch or the next scale degree, E flat, I build my triad on it. Um, e flat to G is a major third, 
and G to B flat is a minor third. So this is a major triad. But remember when we were learning our different versions of the minor scales, we could alter the sixth and seventh scale degrees? Well, we can do that here. What if we raised the seventh scale degree? and had E flat G be natural. What if I raise my leading tone? I'm still building it on May. Well, I have from um, E flat to G, that's a major third. And from G to B, that's also a major third. So this is an augmented interval and we'll abbreviate that with an uppercase A. So that's a possibility in minor. What if I go to the fourth scale degree? F, A, C. Now because of the key signature, it's A flat. So F to A flat is a minor third. And A flat to C is a major third. So this is a minor triad. Now on some rare occasions, we could have our sixth scale degree A raised and then that would change the quality of both the chord that's built on the second scale degree and the chord that's built on the fourth scale degree but they are less common so i'm going to leave them off of this diagram but just know that that is a possibility um, this is built on fa okay going on to sol g Now let's see, G to B flat, because of the key signature, is a minor third, and B flat to D is a major third, so this is minor. But remember, we can raise our sixth or our seventh scale degrees, and actually the most common version of this chord in minor is the one in which we raise the leading tone. If we raise B flat to B and use the leading tone from G to B is a major third and from B to D is a minor third. So the most common version of the triad built on the fifth scale degree in minor is a major triad. Now I go to the sixth scale degree, which is lay because it's lowered here. Um, a flat to C is major, a major third, and C to E flat is a minor third. This is a major triad. And then the seventh scale degree, we could have it built on B flat, but the most common version is built on the actual leading tone. So we raise the leading tone uh, we, well, we raise the seventh scale degree from the subtonic to the leading tone. And now we have B natural to D, that's a minor third. And D to F, that is also a minor third, so this is diminished. And then we get back to the triad built on our tonic, and that's also minor. So there are more options for your triad qualities in a minor key signature than there are in major. Um, but let's look at the differences. So I think I'll use red to show the difference in quality between the chords built on the tonic in major and ma it's major and in minor it's minor. On the supertonic, in major it's minor and in minor it's diminished. The median, in major it's minor and in minor it's major. You can kind of see there's some opposite things going on here. The fourth scale degree, the minor version is the most common in minor um, and in major it's going to be major. But here look, the chords that are built on the fifth scale degree, we'll use green to show that they are both major, they're both the same. And same thing on the leading tone here. So there are some triad quality similarities between these two keys, between major and minor. 
and they are the chords that are built on the fifth scale degree and the seventh scale degree when it's the leading tone. So now if you take a minor key signature and any minor key signature and do, go through the same process of building triads on each scale degree, you will get the same quality types. So this is a universal concept um, in major and minor keys. And this is going to be important in the future when we learn about music analysis and Roman numerals. So to recap, there are triads in the world of music. And triads are made up of three pitches. They are chords that are made up of three pitches, but they are specifically three superimposed thirds. You are given a root and then you build some kind of third above that and then you add on another third above that and so you always end up with either a snowman on either all lines or on all spaces you end up skipping two pitches in the musical alphabet in order to build your triad there are four types of triad quality major minor augmented and diminished. Now the confusing thing is that they are all built up of either major thirds or minor thirds and you have to know which way you stack those thirds on top of each other will create different types of chord quality. So that's why I like using that stuffed cookie analogy because then you can actually manipulate the cookies in your own hands and build the different types of triads based on the type of um, minor third or the regular stuffed cookie or a major third, the double stuffed cookie or whatever confectionery deliciousness you decide to use for this. So after you know those four types of triad qualities, then you need to know that if you build them, build a triad on each scale degree in a major or a minor key that you are going to get a specific set of chord qualities, triad qualities, which if you're thinking from say C major, as in this example, to any other major key, that order of triad qualities, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished major, would then be replicated um, on the same scale degrees in any other major key. And same thing with minor. If you take these chord qualities as we built triads on each scale degree of the minor key and then replicate that in any other minor key, you're going to get the same order. But in minor, there's an extra level um, that you need to be aware of, and that is the fact that we can raise and lower the six scale degrees depending on what type of minor scale we are in. So that is my lecture on triads. I hope you have cookies or can go get yourself some cookies or give you just, you know what, you earned a snack. Just go get yourself a snack and start working on your homework. <laughs>